of flesh, so God, but born of flesh, to become as a man, to live life as a man, is the only man who has lived a sin-free life and who was put to death on the cross to suffer and take the burden. He was the sacrificial lamb and he would take he took the burden of all of our sins, all of us. They came down were born on him. Yeah. So before the universe was created by God, yes. you believe God existed and alongside he had a son? Yes, God, the Son and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, yeah. were all present yeah. together yeah. before so, the universe, so, before there was anything. So before there was in anything... The beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Sure. The so, and the light. so, if we were to understand this concept of God in which, do you consider each of these are persons within the Trinity? Not persons, no, the only person was Jesus. Jesus. So, Jesus so, was so, God manifest as a man yeah so the father and the son and the holy spirit this three comprises one god one. yeah yes. so so individually how much of god are they they're, they're all no individually like the father is he 100 percent god yes and jesus is 100 percent god and the holy spirit is 100 percent god if you're 100 percent god are you not one god they're all 100% God, they're all... So all each God. one, each one, if you're 100%, yes. you're complete, you're one yes. complete God. Yes. So how many complete gods do we have There's in this? one complete God, but God... Now one family of three complete gods. Family is probably the wrong word. <laughs> Father and Son is not a family? Yeah, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit is not. Yeah. Um, it's your conscience. So, it's so one, one collective body of three complete gods yes so if you have three complete gods why do you call one god because they are bonded you know they are gone, one then i suppose almost all manifested in some yeah. sense of earth it's still him it's god almost coming yeah. down to earth as a man that's his son. Yes, that's right. Yeah. When you say son, do you mean God generated him? When you say he's a begotten son, as you said, begotten, what does it even mean? He, he, he sent. Before he came to this world, yeah. what does it mean that he's a son of God? He, he, Jesus, the son of God, was sent to earth. Now we understand through, sending through the Virgin Mary. Let's let's talk about before the universe was created. Okay. He had a son. What do you mean that he had a son? Does he have a wife? No, he didn't have a wife. So he has a son without a wife. I don't know about symbolism. Like 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 if you think about it, when you say son, the son. Yeah, our concept of a son is a little yeah. bit different. So in what way, in what way, it's in belief, it's belief. let me um, it's an give you, give me my understanding of what son is. A son could be a literal son yeah. or a metaphorical son or a legally adopted son, which is a metaphoric one. So Jesus is either a literal son, like he, he is a literal son, he okay. is a literal son of God, he was, uh, the Holy Spirit visited Mary and she became but before before Mary got pregnant yes. the son already existed Indeed. yeah so let's not make it difficult to bring the creation in let's talk about before the creation you had so Jesus the son proceeded from the father or did he exist alongside he the father existed alongside. Then the how Trinity is he the son? If you and your son exist without a beginning, how you are a son yeah, and father of another? I'm not an eternal ethereal being, am I? I'm not. Do, do you see my point? You cannot be a son of a father if you exist side by side. Which is where belief and the understanding of 
the whole concept come to its face. So let me let me make it even um, simpler. Does the son need the father for Absolutely. him to be God? Absolutely. So he is dependent on the father. Yes, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. Dependent. Okay. Do you agree? God has to be independent and not dependent on anything. In what way? In any way, shape, or form, God is independent for his existence, for his continuation of his life. He doesn't need or depend on anyone or anything. God That's what we mean. God is eternal. No, God is living, ever living. Ever living, yeah. Yeah. For it's his there. for his life though. In the beginning. No, God existed, God existed without a beginning. Yes, absolutely. So if he existed having life, he doesn't need to depend on anyone for his life. No. He's independent. Yes. If the son is dependent for his life on the father, then he is not and cannot be God. Because God has to be a being who is totally independent. How can you worship a being who depends on someone else? Does it make sense? Uh, I don't think it does. I think that the fact that you've, you've got to believe that Jesus Christ is, he is a part of God. How much part of God is he? I didn't know the percentages, but... But think about it. If, he, if he's a part of God, then he's not fully God. If he's fully God, then there are three but fully three gods, Trin not the one Trinity, God. The Trinity is one God. It's the if God, Trinity, it's God, it's God manifesting okay. himself in so let's different ways to get over point. a uh, word. Yeah. To get as, as, to win over the people, to win. To, yeah, to bring people back to yeah. salvation and so yeah, right. Idea, but yeah. once you say Trinity is one God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's talk about God because it's like did it's Jesus come to tell people that God like was a Trinity? Water, water exists. Ice and it can be steam and it can be water. Not at the same but time. It's all water. Yeah, but not at the same time. Well, the, it's the not, different states. It's not, it, yeah, but yeah. It's in the three different states. Did Jesus Christ ever say that he was part of God? No. So why do you believe that he was God? Did he not say that? Did he not say also? He never said I am God. Did he not say that he has a God and his father is your father too? He said, uh, no, I'm losing it. Yeah, the Bi yeah. I know in the Bible, Jesus Christ says to Mary Magdalene, you wait here and go and tell my brothers that I am going to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Right. Jesus makes that statement in the Bible, in the right. New Testament. He says, I am going to my father and your father. That means he's not a special son, like different than you. He has the father who is your father too. So the sonship is not unique. And secondly, he continues by saying, he's going to my, his father and your father and his God and your God. So he has a God he's going to. God doesn't have a God. God, God cannot have a God. No. So if Jesus says that he has a God, that means he cannot be God, according to his own admissions. In fact, yeah, there's a, a son of God. Yeah, even a son of God cannot be God in any way, shape or form. It's not, it's because it's if you say son of God like Adam is called a son of God in the Bible, Adam. In the genealogy, in, in, in one of the genealogies, either in Matthew or Luke, Adam is called the son of God. If you look at the genealogy and He's the son of, son of, and eventually end, ends by saying, Adam, who is the son of God. David is called a son of God. Ephraim is called a son of God. There are many sons of God in the Bible. So we know that in the biblical language, son of God is not something like a literal son of God. They are figurative, meaning someone who is um, special, righteous, devout, God-fearing. Yeah. So Jesus was a devout, God-fearing individual. In fact, he actually identified who the true God is. This is in John, 1 John 7, 3, I think, yep. a verse in which he says, yes, there's a we verse, the yeah, yeah, I can, I can I show it to you, I I can, no, 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 I can show it to you at least, you know, John 17, 3, okay, no, you see, it's in actually John 17, 3, no, 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 I will show it to you at least, so I'll bring up John 17, 3, So let's go to Bible Gateways uh, 
biblical website yeah. about the Bible. And this is where, in the New International Version, uh, or any Bible... The Version has got the uh, King James. Shall we get King James? We can get King James, no problem. So let's go and find another version. Oops, too many consenting. King James. King James Version, yeah? So we want to know about John 17.3 And this is eternal life that they might know thee, you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom they have sent. If you read the full chapter These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify the Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Yes. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God. Thee referring to the Father. Yeah, the Father yes. So the Father is the only true God according to Jesus. Yes, the Father is God. Yes. So Jesus cannot be... Jesus cannot be true God. He is the Son of God. Yeah. The Son of God, according to Jesus' and the biblical yeah. language, is a righteous person. But he's not God. He is the Son of God. Yes. And he is part of the Holy yeah, yeah. Trinity, which are three manifestations, parts But Jesus of never God. says God is a trinity in anywhere in the Bible. The word trinity is not even in the Bible. So what we say is this. What happened is, Jesus Christ came to the children of Israel as a prophet and a messenger. Right. Whenever he went, the people considered him as a mighty prophet and a messenger of God who came to heal them. They brought their sick daughters yeah, yeah, and lepers yeah, yeah. and the blind and they, oh, this is a mighty prophet of God. They accepted him as a prophet. Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm here as a God or son of God on earth and worship me. You would not find anything. No, he didn't Instead, say worship me, which exactly. Is why we don't yeah, exactly. Worship him the way. Yeah. The Jewish, no, the Jewish yeah. So yeah. instead he came to tell people, worship the one who is in heaven. Yes. The Lord's Prayer, if you remember, it says, O our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, yeah. thy will be done, thy kingdom. thy kingdom come, and so on. So the worship is only to God, God. who is in heaven. He is the one who sent prophets and messengers, yes. and Jesus is, is on the messenger. This is exactly the Islamic belief, because Christ, Jesus Christ, was called a Christ, the Messiah the Jewish people are awaiting, who they rejected. But Islam says, no, he was the Messiah who came to his people. And he also said to them, this is also in, in the Gospel of John, I have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. But when I go, I will send him and he will guide you unto all the truth. The text says that who you will send is the Holy Spirit. But actually, if you think about it, this is something perhaps the writers changed over the time because the Holy Spirit was already coming in as, as, a, as a force to guide people even in this process. But he says, but Jesus said, if I don't go, he will not come. But when I go, I'll send him. So that person is some called the paraclete or a comforter like Christ who will come after Christ to give up the total, complete guidance of God. You know, who, do you know who came? Prophet Muhammad. No, 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 no. He really came because you don't know him. Well, well, don't if you if you know, knew about him, who came to tell people, yeah. If you if you look at the Quran, the Quran says there is only one God, who is the God of Abraham, Jacob, Moses, God of Noah, God of Jesus. This is the one true God who sent prophets and messengers before to tell them to worship none but God. So the same God. There's no same God. It can't be the same God with two separate religions. <laughs> what happened, religion what happened is this. People did... So they're trying to create a single religion out of okay. Judaism and Christianity at the okay. moment. What was the religion of Moses? No, I don't know. I'm not a no. scholar. So if you think about it, the religion of Moses was believing in one God, submitting and surrendering to this one God's will. 
that was his religion. That's what he was doing. He was telling these people to do that. What was the religion of Abraham, the prophet? No, he was not a Jew. Not a yeah, sure, sure. I'm not a scholar of the Bible. If you read the Bible, we know that he was not a Jew or a Christian, but he believed in one true God. He submitted his will to this one true God, and he asked people to do the same. Do you know what this is in Arabic? No. If you submit your will to the one true God, you are a Muslim. And that process of submission is called Islam. That's what the Arabic terms means. Well, so if I said, no, 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 let, let, let's, uh, let's understand it. Abraham submitted his will to the will of one true God. Yeah. You're not going to convert me. No, no, what I'm saying is you already believe in one God. Yes. You already believe in Abraham I and Moses. In, I believe in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but if you believe Jesus is a messenger, and you believe God now will you send, said that. was he not a messenger? He's he, he's a messenger. He's a messenger he from God. A messenger. He was the son of he was God. The of humanity. Humanity. No, he was he, he a guide. He was a guide to the people at that time. He says, no one can come to the Father but through me. Absolutely. Right. So he was, for the people at this time, the only way to God. He was turning the people towards God, God and towards Christianity. Not Christ Christianity. Christian. Christ Christian. And it moves look, look. The word. He didn't preach Christianity. He preached about monotheism, worshipping one God. He didn't. And he talked about someone to come after him who will guide unto the whole of the truth. The church tells you it's the Holy Spirit, but you know that it cannot be the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is already there and there is not a separate entity like the Holy Spirit because, you know, Jesus at one point said about that hour and about that day, no one knows, no knows. not even the angels in heaven, no. not even the Son, but only who? The, Lord. the Father. Yeah. Even the Holy Spirit is excluded. That means the only one who is all knowledgeable is what Jesus Christ identifies as the Father who, who says you should worship. Not the Holy Spirit, not the Son, but the Father. We are saying what Jesus identifies as the Father is the only true God. That is the only true God that we should be worshipping and submitting our will to. And this only true God has sent his final revelation like he sent the revelation before. He sent the final revelation the Quran. He sent the Gospels. The Injil, the Quran. Look, look. If 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 you haven't read the Gospels, you would have said, "I don't know anything about the Gospels," because you've read about the Bible, the Gospels. You know about it. When you read, when you read the Quran, sure. When you read the Quran, you will see that your heart and mind will say, "Yes, this is the same God that has revealed the new message with proof and evidence." Because you have to read it. Because the Quran is giving you evidence for its divine origin. Yeah, it I tells think, you. I think I would find myself way, way, way too confused if I read the Bible, read the Quran, read the Hindu. Confusion would be clarified because you would see that the true, true revelation from God will give you clarification and contentment in the heart and the mind. When you read the Quran, when you read the Quran, my friend, what's your name? I'm Peter. Peter, and what's your name? Carol. Carol. Peter and Carol, I'm Mansur. Pleasure speaking to you. Right. When you read the Quran, it will resonate with you in your heart and your mind, and you'll say, it makes sense. There is one God. Well, I'm and trying this... to get the Bible to resonate with me, and... Yeah. You see, the Bible, with... the Bible, what people don't know, has undergone so much changes with the hands of man. There were many, there were many, the Quran, yeah. we, can tell, we can tell you how the Quran protected itself from the changes, but to give you the flavor of the Bible, there were many Gospels written, not the four only, and some of these Gospels are now in museums and libraries, like you've probably heard of the Gospel of Judas, Gospel of Peter, Gospel of Mary, Gospel of Infancy, Gospel of St. Thomas. Yeah, there's a whole people called the the the, the um, is it called the Jesus Seminar or something? They believe in these five gospels. It's a saying gospels of the 114 sayings. So there are many many gospels. Yeah, we know they existed, and they contradict between themselves. 
but the church only chose four without giving reasons how, right? So what we are saying is the Bible underwent changes within the hands of people as they seemed theologically, dogmatically fit for their belief and whatever. The Quran, when it was revealed, sent down to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he was not even a lettered person who didn't know how to read or write. It was given to him in his heart and then he dictated and they wrote it down and they memorized well, that's it. That's the same with the yeah. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. So the Quran was written down and memorized. Each sentence, each ayah is called an each, like a verse, and each word, each phrases, all of it was memorized and it was written down from day one to this day. So, you know, we fast in the month of Ramadan. Yeah. In this month of Ramadan, do you know what we do in the mosques at evening prayer? We invite you to go and visit, please. You, you, you will see the difference and experience it. You know, it's, it's, it's worth going. Um, and enjoy the food as well in Ramadan when we break our fast. Oh, yeah, Beautiful, break fast. Yeah, delicious yeah, now, food. In, in Ramadan, not this month. In Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. You're invited to one of those mosques. Um, please um, do visit. We, the Imam, the one who leads the prayer, he recites the whole of the Quran from beginning to end in this 30 days or 27 days he finishes, right? Without looking at it. If he makes some mistakes, so many people behind him to correct the mistakes. So this practice goes on months before, years before, decades before, all the way throughout. If you have memorized a book by the letter, you know, like things like, you know, um, these men had with the Bible. No one has memorized the whole Bible um, that we know of today. Yeah, people, do you know of anyone who memorized the whole Bible? You probably won't find anyone. The Quran, yeah, yeah, but Quran is about 600 pages and it's memorized letter by letter, sound by sound. So because it's memorized like this, it's impossible to corrupt it. It's just it. a mantra then though, isn't it? You're just um, spilling out the same words no, no, no. that you think. But it has meanings, right? So when we say, what we recite, for example, say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say He is one, the only. Allahu Samad, the one who is absolute, eternal. The one who is independent. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. This is what the Quran says. He is not someone who is begotten, someone who produces children. Walam yakul lahu kufu wan ahad. There's nothing so like unto him. Where did Jesus come from in the Quran? Jesus, Quran has a story, a historical narration, a chapter yeah, called Surah course. Maryam. Chapter of Maryam, it tells us how when Maryam was given glad tidings by the angels that God chose her to be a sign to the people. And she said, how can I have a son when no man has touched me? Because she was pure and chaste. She didn't commit adultery. Yeah. And the angel said, it's decided by God, whatever work God wants to create, it's so easy for him. So God, God, so God gave his word, God gave his word, Mary became pregnant because of this word. And she brought the child when she delivered the child, because now people will say like, what have you done? So when she brought the baby, they said, oh, sister of me, Harun, what have you done? Your father and mother, they weren't unchaste and uh, ungodly people. And you have now got a child without, without marriage. How could she have defended herself? There's no way she could say, oh, God gave me a son. She only pointed to the child. And they said, how can we speak to a child who's in the cradle? I mean, are you, how can we? The baby Jesus spoke in the Quran, the baby Jesus saying, I am a servant of God, slave of God. I mean, that's the reality, my friend, Peter. No, the miracle, that miracle is a miracle that saved her from accusation of adultery. Because if she said, look, God gave me the child, she would have been stoned to death. She would have been stoned to death because according to the Jewish law, if you have brought something without a marriage, you'll be stoned to death. But when the baby Jesus so spoke... what does that make of your religion then? Your religion is so barbaric, you're going to stone a woman to death. When, when Moses was given the law to stone people to death, was that barbaric? Moses wasn't given the law to stone people to death. 
Thou shalt not kill, I believe, is one of the laws. It, it, is, an, it, 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 it is a Mosaic law stoning people to death. Well, it's nothing new. Wrong. It's, well, Even if it came from God, it's wrong, is it? It's I in don't the, believe God told anybody to kill anybody. And he if, wouldn't God, have told anybody if God gives a law... He wouldn't have told anybody to kill someone by a barbaric method such as stoning. So and even God, if God... To get from the cradle, came from the gospel of the infancy of Jesus Christ. It's a second century Arabic apocryphal fable from Egypt. That's where they got it from. You see, the utter desperation of trying to save... That's my evidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, you know what? We... we, we um, yeah. Yeah. So now we realize the whole belief that Quran didn't introduce it. It was already known to the people that Jesus defended his mother and there are certain historical accounts to that effect. So he's now confirming what well, I'm telling you. Well, I can't vouch for that historical fact, can I? Look, and my, my belief mm. won't let me jump that no. bridge, that what barrier. We, so what I'm we are saying, go, Carol, oh, let's, yeah, so let's, 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 uh, let's deal with that one. Let's deal with that. So now he is confirming, he's confirming something. It's very good for helping in that discussion. He's confirming that the belief that Jesus Christ spoke Quran didn't introduce it. It was already known historically to many people, and the people wrote about it. Fable. No, I mean, you consider it fable. Do you know why he considers it fable? fable? Because, it's, because it's, not it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Exactly. The Bible is the book I go by. Yeah. So, I, I'm not going to suddenly so, run out and buy a Quran. So, so, so why, why are the other Gospels not in the Bible? I don't know. Uh, precisely. Precisely. So the church... It's too fat. It's too big. Yeah. So the church decided, for whatever reason, to exclude some of the things, it doesn't mean they were wrong, because whatever they included, how do you know they're right? If it's a fable, it cannot be from God, because the Quran comes, is supposed to be the word from God. But the author, to, to help the him Quran out, already borrowed that story you that are, was already circulated. Um, right. Soko, keep on recording. Um, Peter and Carol, Peter and Carol, do you do you know the story about the flood? Is yes. found in the ancient Sumerian records yes. of the Gilgamesh epic, yes. Atrahasis Atrahas epic, Atrahas right. and the Enumelish epic. So when you go into Mesopotamia, in Babylonia, these stories are already there, predating long before the Bible for thousands of years. So, uh, according to according to this gentleman, the Bible borrowed from those fables. So the Bible is false. Would you agree? No, not at all. So we have to be consistent. We either consistently agree that yes, it is not a fable the Bible has, but it is a revelation of the true reality which the remnants of it survives in ancient historical record. Likewise, the story about Jesus Christ speaking in the cradle is a historical reality, the remnants of it still available in historical record. Just because it's not the Bible, it's not in the Bible, it doesn't mean it's a fable. So they need to be consistent. Coming back to your point about barbarism. Look, in Mosaic law, in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. Yeah? God has given this law, eye for an eye, life for a life. If somebody kills someone, they have to give their own life as a punishment. That was from God. There's nowhere in the Bible that I've read. Say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That is the Mosaic law. The I can Mosaic. show you too. No, law of Moses. Moses was given this law. This is a law Jesus didn't come to abandon and reject. He didn't say, I've come to destroy the law. It's not a commandment. But we cannot call it barbaric because God said so. You might not like it because you're saying, how can we kill someone? No, the, the testimony yeah. of what we're now in the New Testament, yeah. the New Covenant, obviously, Jesus came down to, to dispel the Old Covenant. Yeah. He, he didn't come to destroy, he said, I came to fulfill. Yeah. Fulfilling doesn't mean you go away, get away with the old laws. He finished the Old Covenant. You see, now, so, so now if you think about it, and he started, he did, started the New Covenant. So whatever law, it's abrogated, you're saying? It's what? Abrogated. It's, it's no longer applicable. Yes. But to say that once God gave that law as someone is a barbaric law, it would not be fair because if indeed that those laws came from God, then God's 
in his wisdom, he gave a just law. To give you, let me give you a simple example. You see, we don't expect people to kill one another. Killing. If the punishment for killing was 20 pounds fine in this country, do you think it's going to stop people killing each other, reduce this crime, the crime remains the same or increase? I would imagine it would increase. It will increase because the crime and the punishment is that not match. congruent, yeah. it doesn't match. If the punishment is 20 pounds, someone got 30 quid, I've got 40 quid, I can get away with two murder. It's not going to prevent them. But if you say, if you kill someone unjustly, you will be killed in return, they'll be thinking twice. Well, it has a deterrent effect. Years ago. Yeah, yeah. And that is why, that is why in many countries which stop doing that, the crime rate has not yeah, but, come down. Because the crime rate continues. You put them behind bars and they gather together to make a better criminal when they come out. And that's what they do. Plan, plot, and they will come out and commit the crime again. Yeah. Islam says it gives you harsh punishment as a deterrent effect cut so that they don't do that. Cut your hand off the ceiling. So that, do you know what this did? Yeah, because of the, No, no, because of this law in Saudi Arabia, even 100 years ago, when it came to prayer time, you know we have five prayer times, specific times, like say in the midday, yeah. in 12 o'clock, uh, 1 o'clock, yeah. midday yeah. prayer. There is the call to pray, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, yeah. from the mosque. People, they don't have to lock their shops. No. Imagine there's a merchandise with valuable commodities. They put a piece of cloth over it and they'll just go to prayer. Come back without locking. Because there are people, they know that if they're going to steal something, yeah. their hands will cut off. Yeah. So it stopped people from committing this crime because it's effective. Historically known, it's dem <laughs> demonstrated. It's not because it's trying to cut the people's hands off, it's trying to stop the crime from being committed. So when Islam came with Prophet Muhammad Islam, the Quran came with its own evidence. Because otherwise you would say, how am I going to believe in this book? Every prophet that came, they had some proof and evidence for their claim. When Moses came, how did people believe in him? Just because he said so? No. When he parted the Red Sea and he traveled along that yeah. dry part, it was an evidence against them, but this is not an ordinary person can do. When Jesus healed the blind and the lepers and so on, no doctor at that time could do it. Yeah. They knew that he was indeed an agent of God, a messenger of God. That is his miracle that he did. When Prophet Muhammad came, he did so many miracles and the greatest of his miracles is the Quran, that no one can imitate it. No one can find a contradiction within it. Things that it says, it is impossible for it to have been said. I don't think there's much or anything in the Bible that you can say contradict or argue against. The Bible, unfortunately, because human hands have altered it, it is now having contradictions within it. I imagine that to human give you, memory might have yeah. swayed a little in the writings of the Quran. Yeah, yeah, the human beings are, 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 well, at, are at fault. fault. Yeah. Exactly. The Quran, because it's going to be the final book of God, final revelation, God took in the protection himself, as the Quran says. That no, no, I'm just quoting you the Arabic so that I'm not making it up. I'm telling you, the Quran says that, that God, he has revealed the reminder and he will protect it, he says. And the Quran has been protected through memorization and writing. You can find a manuscript of the Quran, you know, within the first hundred years of Islam, like 1300 years ago. And exactly how we read it today. This is the level of preservation. So, if you read the Quran, 1400 years. Yeah, 1400 years ago, the Prophet Muhammad oh. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. He came 1400 years ago. I thought that Jesus was 2000 years yeah. ago. Yeah, Prophet Muhammad. Oh, if you believe he's Jesus and your writings about Jesus are from 1400 years ago, you're 600 years adrift. Quran, the Quran, the Quran came after Christ had already been. Yeah, but and so the Quran the Bible came, came after Christ. But only by a couple of hundred years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours is four, six hundred. No, no. Years. What we are saying is the same God revealed, sent down another messenger after Christ, and also told us within this final revelation the errors and the falsehood that has crept in within the revelation, within the Torah and the Gospels, and 
confirm the truth that was already there present. By the revelation, are you talking about the end times revelation? No, no I'm talking about in the Bible, inspiration, the guidance from God, not a book of revelation, but God's guidance is his scripture. So when God sends another scripture, he confirms the truthfulness of the previous scriptures, whatever is there, and also gives us the confirmation of the falsehood that has entered within it. There are many things, the, even the scholars of the Bible will tell you that people have corrupted the Bible with these falsehood. With this falsehood. You can, I mean, this is the matter of scholarship. So the Quran came to give us the final guidance without any confusion so that we can truly worship God and be content and be saved from the hellfire and be in paradise. And this is only way possible by submitting ourselves to the final messenger that what is brought from God. Okay. You take care Peter. Please do read the Quran. You have to read the Quran, read about Prophet Muhammad and then you will see what we're talking about. Okay? Nice pleasure speaking to you, Carol and Peter. You take care. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.